new journal and guide. Subscribe today. Certainly glad to hear uh, Congressman Rizzo talk about the whole issue of civility uh, in politics. That's certainly something that's missing. Uh, you know, so often the Republican, many Republicans are saying we don't want to increase revenues. Uh, the Democrats are saying, you know, we don't want to cut spending. I think many people are beginning to move to the mid midpoint, perhaps, let's put everything on the table. It's hard to believe that we're right back at a debt ceiling issue. Believe it or not, the first Wednesday in August, the debt ceiling will expire if there isn't action. And at that point, obviously, the Treasury Secretary will have to face it. We pay Social Security recipients or troops in the field. So one question we'd like to throw out to the panel is, you know, with the uh, uh, national election coming forward, can anything meaningful happen in Congress um, before elections? <laughs> I, uh, I met with uh, Leader Cantor in his office, and, and this is not something that uh, I would be embarrassed, of course, if it got to him, because uh, we had some parts of the conversation I think were private, but, but some parts I think can be shared. Um, it wasn't all that long ago. And I shared with him, I said, uh, I said, Leader, I said, what, uh, what hope do I have, or what, on what basis uh, do I have to go back to the district, and either for me personally, or uh, to share with others, to say that we are any closer right now to uh, a comprehensive agreement that would arrest this trajectory that we're on than we were a year ago. And uh, we talked about that a bit. And the, the short answer is, uh, I think it is sadly, uh, the answer is no. I, I don't see any real comprehensive agreement coming, being forthcoming. I've shared with my own conference multiple times, boldly, as clearly as I can articulate it, that our calendar needs to reflect the challenges facing this country. As much as I like to be in district, um, it's very helpful and we work very hard here. I think we need to be in session of trying to find and fight for common ground. Um, I'm convinced there's common ground out there. It, it, it lies just beneath the surface. You'll find some Republicans quietly who will say, you know what, I know what we need to do. And I've had a, a, enough conversations with my friends who are Democrats to say, you know, we need to really meet you there on, on containing costs. And, and there really is common ground there. We've got to identify it, celebrate it when we find it, and have the courage to vote for it. Um, and I think we'd be, I think, I think we'd be better off um, if we were in session and, and, and really made this a, a critical priority for our country. I, I guess the question is, and I understand what you're saying, Congressman, why this quiet underground, these individuals of both Republicans, apparently moderate and moderate Democrats, why are they not coming to the surface rather than staying there and saying what needs to be done and doing it? And that's what's troubling to me because I hear some of the same things, that we've got some moderate Republicans, we've got some middle of the road Democrats, we've got some that are willing to talk, but apparently they are... Um, I don't know how they are not willing to come forward and, and say, okay, this is it. And I suspect it's just politics. And it, from what I'm gathering, uh, it is the radical left, radical right that's controlling yes. the agenda. Let me speak. I can speak from authority on the Republican side. I can only speculate uh, on the Democrat side. Maybe Bobby can pitch in there. But for Republicans, um, it, uh, it's not the only influence, but a, a critical influence is Americans for Tax Reform, uh, led by its president and founder, Grover Norquist. Now, uh, about five months ago, I almost felt like uh, kind of that Enron accountant, you know, who, who you know, you're, you, you're looking at your books and you go, my gosh, you know, this doesn't, this doesn't line up with that, and then the more you look at it, and, and I really, I ran on a platform, y'all. I don't want to be, you know, duplicitous here. I said that we have a spending problem, not a revenue problem. And generally, I think that's true. You add up total revenue and you add up total GDP over the last 11 years. Divide one by the other, it's 16.9. That's not how I feel. It's not an emotion. Uh, those were good times and bad. It's only yielded over 18% twice. 06, 07. I think it was 18.1 and 18.4. So, then you look for historical context. Um, 
again, I've shared with you that we haven't run the Republic on that since 1956. Now, you layer on top of that the Americans for Tax Reform pledge, which virtually every Republican has signed. Um, and it basically says this very simple document that you can change the tax code all you want, but if you change it, you, you have to simultaneously, it has to be revenue neutral. If you eliminate a loophole, you've got to reduce something else somewhere else. So basically, and I argued this with my colleagues, that, that it locks you into 16.9. Now, when I came to that conclusion, as simple as that sounds, um, I said I wrestled with it for five months because I knew the ramifications of launching the APR pledge. And uh, people said, Scott, don't do it. We want you to come back. <laughs> right. And I didn't even know that would be funny. <laughs> I tell people I live on the razor's edge between naivete and idealism. It's not a bad place to be. Anyway, I, uh, so I did launch it. I shared it with Bill Bartell. Some of you all know that name. He's a local uh, reporter. And... And I, I just thought, oh, here we go, we brace ourselves. And sure enough, you start feeling the wrath. It starts coming around. But you know, let me share with you this as a word of encouragement. The first person to text me and say, thank you, is Ken Longdale, chairman of the Virginia Beach City Committee of the Republican Party. And it went on and on and on. The first people to come alongside me where Republicans all do this town. And they said, now, Scott, we're with you. And look, it doesn't mean I'm just going to go up there and, and just saddle up to the next uh, tax increase that comes along. I want to be thoughtful about it. There has to, the, the agreement must be comprehensive. It must address the spending trend that we're on. This is not only a Democrat president. He's my president. He's every American president. <laughs> That said, I told you we can have a spirited debate and be civil. I'm deeply disappointed in my president in respect to this. He has not sent over to the Congress a budget with less than a trillion dollar deficit. This production has been brought to you by Image Entertainment.